What's up, people of the internet? Welcome to the Zero Effort Games Podcast, Episode 4. I'm your host, Mike, and joining me today... I'm Phil. And I'm Liz. That's right. Third host. New host. What up? Just dropped. Do we have to get that in the battle pass? Yeah, it cost me all my V-Bucks. Oh, damn. Ah. Damn, we just implied that we bought Liz. That's fucked up. That is fucked up. I'm sorry. I'm here. Just so you know, by the way, (laughs) the the zero effort podcast does does not condone buying people. We do not condone human trafficking, unless it's Power World. Man, this just got Power World. Man, this went off the rails already. All right, so uh, we got we got three fresh topics of discussion coming at you. Uh, Who wants to start us off? I'll go because we might as well get like the biggest stuff out of the way. Oh, okay. Um, so Sony had their state of play last week. Yes. Uh, and they actually had, as of us recording this, they had their part two of that uh, this evening, about two hours ago. Um, we'll start with part one. Part one showed off a lot of different games that are coming out this year. A couple of surprises, a couple of things we really knew about. Uh, Stellar Blade looks phenomenal, even though it's kind of mired in controversy right now from some uh, supposedly sexist devs, which apparently has been debunked. I feel like that's most studios. Yeah. um, Silent Hill got a free game drop last week, as well as the trailer for Silent Hill 2. Ooh. Yeah, it was was Um, a work. I haven't gotten to watch any of this yet. Which there's apparently been mixed feelings about the free one, which is called the short message. Uh, I haven't gotten around to it myself, but a lot of people said it was very much like the PT demo, but not as good. So it was a short message. Yes. Gotcha. Um, Silent Hill Two. They did a very interesting thing where they decided to show off the combat instead of everything else which those games are not known for their combat. Yeah, not not the normal thing I think of when I'm playing Silent Hill. Yeah, yeah, you and uh, just about everybody. Uh, and then let's see. I think perhaps the biggest thing for me was one that I had heard of but never seen anything for, and they, they showed it. The devs of Bioshock showed off a trailer for their new game, Judas. Uh, and it obviously feels very Bioshock in terms of like its themes and how it, the action plays out. So I'm I'm deeply excited for that. A um, couple of VR titles shown because it's Sony. They can't help but show a couple of them to try to push their PSVR to. Naturally. Um, which one of the games is coming out. It's already been out in early access on Steam for like two years. So, no real excitement there. And then the other one is a Metro sequel. Okay. Um, The meat of the show um, really sort of revolved around uh, the last few things they showed, which were Dragon's Dogma 2. Okay. Which looks phenomenal. I wish it had co-op. Yeah. Because that series is begging for it. Yeah, a little disappointing Uh, it doesn't have mm -hmm. that. Uh, Rise of the Ronin, which is a open world team ninja game set in. I actually think it's uh, one of the later periods of Japan's history. I think. Yeah. And I, I'm excited for it just because I love Team Ninja. I'm a Team Ninja bitch. Oh yeah. Have been since Dead or Alive put me through puberty. <laughs> um, Until Dawn is getting its PC and PS5 ports after god knows how long um but the biggest thing that that part one of the state of play was death stranding 2 on the beach okay on the beach um obviously kojima came out talked about it some gave us like a nine minute trailer damn son um featuring but not limited to 
a cybernetic joker slash crow fighting against a cybernetic ninja i'm sure you enjoyed that one it was weird oh but there was also an electric guitar as a weapon so yeah very kojima yeah i would say um, the the game itself looked to be improved on in so many ways just from the nine minute trailer uh, the story is obviously intriguing because we don't know what the hell's actually going on. I didn't play the first um, one, so I definitely couldn't tell you what the hell's going on. 80-hour walking simulator, but with some really great moments. I've heard. Um, we obviously the it confirmed the return of you know Troy Baker's character, who is now the cybernetic Joker Crow type dude. Um, there's a lot of environment things that looked. Like they've really improved on with like landslides and like flash floods. So it'll be interesting to see where the whole game goes. And he's also apparently planning on getting back into the action espionage series. Oh. Um, which he's wanting to be less a game, more movie, which fills Metal Gear. So who knows what that's going to be. And that brings us to the state of play that just happened, which was the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth state of play. Oh. Uh, when I tell you my cries can be heard around the world, that's probably what you heard. Is that, um, is that why I randomly looked up at work and said, Daddy? That might have been it. That might have been why. Checks um, out. Uh, there were not enough tissues, and not for why you think. <laughs> um, and including the demo so dropping tonight, which is currently still downloading because everybody and their mother is, and I can't get it to download quicker. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, just a lot of exciting news coming from from Sony. Nothing like super outstanding. I mean, a lot of the stuff is still a ways off. And that's not really surprising coming from Sony, though. Right. Um, but the weirder news, which is really not news, more rumor, is Microsoft bringing all of their exclusives to other consoles. Yeah. That seems unlikely. Uh, probably more likely than you think. I, I did see a TikTok. Why would they do that? I did see a TikTok earlier. Money. I sent it to you, Phil, uh, where somebody was breaking down how Microsoft has never actually made profit off any of their consoles <laughs> they they had something like a four billion dollar loss on the first xbox yeah and if the whole goal of owning and operating a company is to profit um not a great business model well even in general though that's that's hardware profit yeah. um because all the big studios uh sony nintendo they never really profit off the hardware. No, at they, least not for like the first couple of years. I mean, they're selling the hardware way cheaper than what it would actually be if you bought all of these pieces. Exactly. So you end up with them making all of their money really from the software sales. So if Microsoft can extend where their games are going, they'll make up for that. But that does create a problem of if your exclusives are on other systems mm -hmm. why have your own system yeah like why would i buy an xbox when i can buy a playstation and then have access to all of the xbox exclusive games plus the playstation exclusive games yeah and with them supposedly dropping the new xbox in 2026 mm -hmm. is that still happening is it not phil spencer has gone on record saying that they're going to let us know what their actual game plan is soon so maybe this remains a rumor. Maybe this gets solidified. Can you imagine a world where they just stop producing the Xbox, but still have studios that are producing these exclusive games that go to every other platform now? Sega. You know, that's true, and that didn't work out that well. Uh, well, Sega's, uh, you know, like 20 years later is, that uh, hell, 20 five years later is really finally sort of returning to good graces with their games. Yeah. But that's a 20 to 25 year issue. 
I mean, if it, if it takes Microsoft that long, I mean, let them cook. We'll be on fucking PlayStation 12. <laughs> Back in my day, we had Halo every other year. <laughs> Back in my day, like every three years. we play Halo on the Xbox. That's okay. Nobody's... Back in my day, Forza was an actual contender. <laughs> Nobody's going to download Halo to Infinite for PlayStation. Let's just be serious. Uh, it, apparently there's another good. one of those in the works, too. So, yeah. It's all... Well, the last it's one all, was such know. a flop that, you know, just move on from it. I, I wish I could say Infinite was a flop, but I did spend money on that game. And I did enjoy quite a bit of time in Season 1. I probably put like six or seven hours into it through Game Pass and then just gave up. Uh, I hit Onyx rank and then stopped playing. That's that was that was my That's fair. stint. Well, speaking of consoles, that kind of leads nicely into my my topic of discussion for today. I want you to I want you to close your eyes. I want you to think back. And picture that you're holding the controller. You're sin dunced. What? No. That you're holding okay. a controller. You're blissfully happy. You don't you have no other cares in the world. Everything around you is all distractions are gone. Your life is good. What controller are you holding? What console is giving you that feeling? What is your favorite console of all time? Wow. I don't want to say mine. It's okay. I'll I'll lead off. Give you some time to think. I did spring this on you. Oh no, I know. I just don't want to say it. <laughs> I'm going straight for Nintendo 64. Oh wait, I missed that. When you think about, I mean, Goldeneye, Perfect Dark, Pokemon Stadium, mm. Pokemon Harvest Snap, Moon 64. Harvest Moon. Mario Star 64, Fox. Star Fox, yeah. Smash Brothers, come mm -hmm. on. Like, I mean, like, mine was going to be GameCube. It is GameCube. That's fine. But it's all of those. Live your truth. In, in their box. Like, with a little bit better graphics. That's fair. I can get behind I'm just going to say. GameCube was pretty good for Nintendo. Uh, like, uh, this is a real messed up question. <laughs> This my first ever console was the N64, so mm -hmm. a lot of you know, a lot of emotions there, a lot of feelings. There's a lot of nostalgia supporting this, but I like the game catalog right. for it is insane. But I mean but the game more advanced. Zelda. Then I spent so much uh, time on the PS2. Majora's mask. And mm. then and then there was like the first time playing online with the Majora's Xbox. Mask was such trauma for me as a child. Effects. <laughs> I was not old enough for that game. Oh man, Xbox. So scary. Live. I'm still scared of the moon a little bit. That's like understandable. That it freaks me out still. That's that's I understandable. Think that's a 64 kids kind of. I over. I'm gonna <laughs> have to say, I'm gonna have to say PS2. That's fair. There's some great okay. games for PS2. Like the only uh, two battlefronts that matter, right? And um, and the play yeah, honestly, the PS2 was a really good one. Had some really good racing games. Like growing up with like a bunch of like Dragon Ball games and mm. like Gran Turismo, Grand Theft Auto, and, the, and you watched a game on that. True. There and were there was so many that good called. games. Um, the Punisher game. Oh jeez! Which was like the most brutal thing I'd ever played at that point in my life. Oh man, I forgot about that game. Just there's just too many good games. Shadow of the Colossus. Oh yeah, the secret uh, mask. Yes, Eco. you can romance the Nuwasha characters in that. <laughs> Final Fantasy X, mm. and it can play the PS1 games. That's true. Back when they gave a shit about backwards compatibility. So like it, yeah, it has to it has to land that slot. That is that is a solid pick. Both solid picks, honestly. Like there's really the only way that you could be wrong is if you picked like the Wii U or some shit. I wonder if that's his on Steve. Probably. <laughs> I need to know. 
Oh man, freedom! Oh, it's I always get emulation. My... Freedom okay. Fighters on PS2, man. Oh, Freedom Fighters! What a fucking good game. You know what? I'm I've been out gaming you for longer. I used to play Putt Putt. Midnight Club, Dub Edition, baby. Yes. I was a PC gamer from the get go. I mean, you could have picked PC too. I would consider it. The the only game I ever tried to play on PC was one of the driver games. And I never made it past the tutorial at the start, not realizing that it was completely optional because it didn't really tell you that you could quit out of it. Lo and behold, that's apparently like a very common story people have about that game. That's called Bad UI. You're yeah. right. So I, I haven't played a lot of PC games, mostly because I've had consoles most of my life. First thing I ever had was a Sega Genesis. But like, I distinctly remember... Like, obviously, I've done Minecraft and Stardew Valley and all that on PC, but the first PC game I ever had was a, uh, <laughs> it was a Land Before Time PC oh. game. And the Aladdin <laughs> game? I never had oh, the Aladdin You know what? <gasps> you I'm just going to say it. Roller Coaster Tycoon. Yes. Facts. Zoo Tycoon. Yes. Like Zoo Tycoon. Solid. Zoo Tycoon the... is so good. The Carmen San Diego games. Oh, dude, I forgot about those. There, there is so much good stuff from like the '90s and early 2000s on PC. All you kids just don't know how good it was. Oh, like uh, nowadays you got like Planet Coaster and like Planet Zoo. Uh huh. They're just not the same. They're doing too much for the first Sims. In the wrong way. The first Sim, oh, dude. The first Sim City Sims did something to me. I think as a person, like I still have The Sims Four on my computer. I do too. I just can't seem to like let myself let that go. Like I remember somebody it's trying concerning. to describe my, my cousin played yeah. so much of The Sims, and that was the first mm -hmm. time I'd ever seen it. Was going over to her house, right? And I, and I was just like, "Well, like what?" She, that's all she was talking about for weeks, and I was like, "What do you? What is it?" What do you do? And she's like, you just live. You just do. You make <laughs> just them like, do things. I'm like, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> oh, God. And I finally just gave up and started playing it. And I was like, why is this so good? Oh, it's so good. Oh my gosh. And then there's the people that do the mods. I've never modded my Sims. I have not I'm modded too Sims. Scared. I've modded there's things several like other games. Wins, and the things you can do in that game. There are some when weird you mod things. It, it's insane. Mods, modding any game is just so wild and worth it. Mm -hmm. It's 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 the one reason why like I've mostly gone to PC now, wild. even though there are like the occasional exclusives. Yeah, mm -hmm. like like Skyrim modding is nuts. I haven't touched a console since Breath of the Wild came out. Adding Skyrim with all of the mods is like unlocking an entirely new game. You can go on Reddit and see people basically turn into Devil May Cry, which is just wild to me. Like I, I'm I'm just impatiently waiting for Elder Scrolls Six, and in the meantime, I just keep playing Skyrim with different mods, and just like every time somebody releases a new pack, they're like, "Oh, this is enhanced graphics," and I'm like, "Oh yeah, throw it on there. Give give me all of give me the closest thing I can get to Elder Scrolls Six right now." And I will devour it. Oh my it. goodness. Oh. I need it. I like the torture fill with Elder Scrolls 6 um, TikToks. I like to He does. It. I don't even completely understand how, but like I somehow know that it hurts the person. Because if you're an I... Elder Scrolls fan, you're either incredibly excited or incredibly worried. <laughs> yeah. There is no in between. I'm cautiously optimistic at this point after Starfield and some of the direction they seem to be going. God, yeah, I'm the opposite. I want it so bad, though. I'm sitting here thinking, why do I want Elder Scrolls 6 when I can turn 5 into whatever the hell I want for free? But just think, eventually, in like 2048, when they finally release 6, you'll be able to do the same thing but it'll look even better. 
But by then, I would have strapped myself into a VR headset permanently with an IV drip and not need it. Fair enough. Fair enough. We'll never see Phil again. Unless we go into the metaverse. Don't even get me started on the VR hentai games. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Phil's deep dived a bit too far. We're not for the, for the good of man. It was for science. <laughs> for science? Yes, for science. I regret nothing. I know you don't. And he shouldn't. I encouraged every bit of it. <laughs> you go enjoy your tentacle monsters. Oh my goodness. So, with I that didn't being know said... that story. Um, <laughs> with that being said, uh, what do you have for us, Liz? You know, we were talking about the games we played as a kid. Yes. Right? Have you noticed the trend of horror games for children? What are we trying yeah. to desensitize them to? I don't know if you're as familiar with it as I am, but, like, my son likes Poppy Playtime. And they have characters and toys for these things. What the hell is well, it, Poppy it was really Playtime? F- you don't know what Poppy exactly. Playtime is? No. Oh, my goodness. Isn't it one of the, like, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, like, spinoffs or something? Yes, it's uh... one of those things. But Poppy is this, like, a Chucky doll, but, like, fuzzy. And has a lot of teeth. Yeah, fuck that. And it's just so crazy to me. I... I wish you guys knew what I was talking about. I, I'm I'm familiar enough with it to know that it's not my jam. Right? Uh, there's people listening right now that are freaking out. I mean, then, right? If but like it was the other day. Games with a horror aspect. Uh, like like Bendy and the Ink Machine and, and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and hell, I, I think know. the other day, um. Your son ran into the room while we were on Discord, yes, he did. yelling that he Lamb. wanted to play Cult of the Lamb, which is no. not okay he for like an eight-year-old. What? He saw a YouTuber. Cult of the Lamb, um, which is a game where you are the lead of a cult and yeah. can make people commit suicide. Yeah, and let's let's not. That's wild. Uh, rated T for teen. Uh, yeah, that definitely shouldn't be teen for teen. An image. That should be, and and, and it's. It's very adult themes masked with cartoony graphics. That's how they get away with it. Right? Just, ah, this is a terrible clip, but here you go. This is going to get it to you somehow. Just give me a minute. I am <laughs> terrified. You should be. Like, this thing is terrifying. It's so scary. To die back while she does the clip thing. And it's so they added popular a, with kids. They added a fucking card game to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Oh, that is all. Jesus Christ. Now back to children's horror. Poppy is disturbing. <laughs> what is the blue thing? That's Poppy. That's Poppy. Okay, because I, cause I see another thing that's like a weird... Doll? Doll, yeah. Yeah, I don't know the backstory on that one. And um, then there's the smiling friends, which is right under the blue thing. Yeah, Poppy can fuck right off. Right. Well, and I feel like I, I need to. The yellow thing you can see with the hands. Hell. I feel like I should bring up another game too that's in the similar vein of being like a horror game kind of for kids. I don't even I don't even know if this one would really be something you could say for kids, but it has a, a feel to it that they might enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Called Choo Choo Charles. I'm. Choo-choo immediately Charles. afraid of looking that up. Choo Charles is terrifying. He, he originated it's, it's a YouTube thing. It's absolutely terrifying because it's this train with a monstrous face and you. spider legs. I'm looking it up right now. Oh, good. You just have to start Googling no. these things. What is it, this? This is stuff it's that kids Choo-choo love Charles. to watch on YouTube. It is, yeah. It's like widespread popular. Like they've come out with how many Poppy games now? I don't I even think know. There like, Five Nights at Freddy's had like had like five games in two years. Well, that's fair. Now a major motion there's picture. At least three of those games. Eh, I mean, it's Peacock. I don't know how major that is. And they're making a fourth one. <laughs> it had Matthew Lillard in it. Okay, give it some respect. That's um, fair. Can I just? I want to tangent for two seconds. Just to say yeah. that Peacock is like the worst fucking app I've ever used in my life. I don't use it. I used it on my xbox to watch a couple football games this year because that's where the thursday night games were right or sun one of the nights i don't fucking remember but it like it was terrible i'm hard lined 300 meg and it stutters constantly it randomly closes 
It's garbage. Fix that shit. Anyways. At least streaming apps can make people go back to cable. I mean, at, at this point, it's I'd prefer that. I had, I had to have like seven different subscriptions to watch fucking football this year. It was ridiculous. But anyways, yeah. Yeah, Choo Choo Charles, no, Poppy, no. What? Okay, so oh are at this point, are we just preparing children for the inevitable future of the nation of like I... when all of our icebergs melt <laughs> and all of these horrible diseases that we don't have cures no. for that we some of them we don't even know about just start erupting and start it's turning really people weird. into fucking choo-choo charles like are we trying to desensitize them to something i mean but like i'm i'm more terrified of some of these games than like the actual horror games i play like resident <laughs> evil is not as scary as something like poppy because of the jump scares yeah i mean mm -hmm. Well, we also, I, to be fair, we also grew up with Resident Evil and Silent Hill, so we can't say That's a whole lot. True. But Yeah, I, I guess ours were more hardcore. Well, there, it was more classical in the there, vein I of feel horror. like they were less psychological. Yeah, like it was less like, look at this thing that could be cute like until lore. it fucking murders you. It's like trust, yeah. it's so trust looking, trustful looking, yeah. and then you're like, oh, it's gonna hurt me. Look at this cute like, little children's doing? toy, and then it fucking Pennywise bites your arm off. And I was terrified of the Chucky doll, so I don't understand why he wants, because he has the rainbow friends, which aren't scary, per se. Dolls are They're scary. They're just like really dumb down, yeah. The rainbow friends I can get, because it's like a dumb kind of monster thing. They're, the blue drools, I don't know. It's goofy. I think it was a Roblox thing. I don't know. But they make toys. Like, Elric has the plushies for these characters. Oh, there was one that we wanted and wanted, and then I had to get rid of it. I can't remember. It might have been, um, Poppy. I don't blame you. I would oh, not gosh. want that staring at me from a dark room. Right? No, me either, but he... Okay. All right. So, so, so ga game pitch idea here: Toy Story, but horror. No. See, Actually, I've seen web comics of that idea. Right. And I'm gonna say no. <laughs> I'm good. Like, especially when like the first movie already had like some horror element to it with the the fucked up dolls. Oh yeah, where they all go after Sid. And like, I'm good, oh, yeah. man. I'm good. I mean, kind I'm of Gucci on that point. Yeah, that's that would man. That would absolutely uh, trauma stain stain my underwear. That's what that's gonna do. Oh my gosh, that was insane. Which I think, speaking of horror though, I think the current um, pipeline for like Resident Evil is they have like five games in development. That's a lot of games. Um, one of which, obviously, Resident Evil 9, but still four other titles that we don't know about. More than likely, several remakes. No doubt. And knowing Capcom, also probably some sort of multiplayer game that nobody's going to play because they're trying to shoehorn it in. Yeah. Because um, with three remake and with eight each one got its own multiplayer mode that were technically separate games and they both died incredibly quickly but capcom continues to try fantastic single player they do not know how to do multiplayer i don't know that i've ever played a multiplayer capcom game uh street fighter Right, the fighting games. Like, what do you mean? I well, I I mean, I played, Marvel versus Capcom. I I guess <laughs> I'm I being mean, pedantic. I played I know. those before they were online. Like, um, like I played arcade versions of them. Not a fighting the, game guy. I do like only. Tekken, I love me a good fighting game every once in a while. I can do Tekken. That's about it. I think I've ever played Tekken. Oh. I use more Mortal Kombat. I think the only Capcom game I really enjoyed multiplayer for um, 
was probably holy crap i don't remember the name of it whatever that dinosaur game was that came out last year uh uh, oh exo primal yeah um really fun multiplayer but it wasn't good enough to keep my interest i don't know why but the only thing i could think of was arc and i was like that's not it stop suggesting it brain and like the major the major problem they have with that game is that progression sucked ass because you were stuck playing the same map over and over and over again and you would maybe occasionally get one of the other maps oh yeah you tried to get me to play that i just couldn't get myself there it was such a fun game but you're doing the same thing like every single match it got old super quick yeah maybe it's better now but it seems to be the theme of games these days is it'll be better later we're gonna release it now. To a piece and then you get games fair. that that release with like a hundred hours of content in their early access, mm-hmm. like Power World <laughs> that came out of nowhere. I have not played Power World yet. I'm like yeah. seventy something hours into it. Same. It, well, I'm my options are to play it through Game Pass on my Xbox, right, 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 right. and yeah. You're a Mac user. We, we've talked about this. I keep forgetting. I will continue to forget. I'm sorry. That's okay. I mean, I use there are both. ways to play on Mac, but it's I not use going both to set as, up. Yeah, I mean, I could, I could ah. run a, a hard drive on here, but like that just takes up half of my already not very large amount of storage space. I know. But yeah, like, I, I kind of want to try it, but I also know that it's like super behind on console. Yeah, it's several patches behind. Mm-hmm. Last I checked, you couldn't even like rename your pals on oh, console. Oh, the, yeah, that's fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. We'll get there. Eventually. I'll give it a shot one of these days. It is definitely an experience. It looked... I've, I haven't seen a lot. Most of what I've seen is just random TikToks and stuff. And uh, it it looks kind of interesting. It looks weird. I mean, I have Twitch pulled up right now, um, you know, watching a friend stream. And on the the recommended channels, like half of them are Pal World. Oh, I I have no doubt. Um, like Sasha Gray is playing Pal World right now. Well, it's better than playing huh. with herself, I guess. Oh well, I mean, debatable. I mean, she probably would make about the same amount of money either way. <laughs> But like that that's the reach that game has. Like everyone and their mother is playing it. Like she mostly plays like uh Souls type games or like really difficult games and she's playing Power. Then there's like God knows how many people actually like watching forty one point two K viewers. Jesus. I guarantee it's probably the most streamed game right now. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, right, it was like for the first week. Now it's it's not. Uh, it's like on the second line of of games. That's kind of surprising. But you have the Final Fantasy VII demo that just dropped. It's only got thirty k. So look at the most watched games on Twitch for this month. How the fuck is Grand Theft Auto number two still? Because people love roleplay. That is crazy. Power World's at number four, though. No no real surprise there. I mean, when your game hits 19 million copies sold in two weeks, that's uh, that's a pretty big following. Yeah, I mean, so much so that the servers couldn't even <laughs> can handle that. Uh, I think the quotes are, it's somewhere between like four hundred dollars to $600,000 a month they're spending on the servers. To keep the game up. <laughs> That's insane. It, it really is something. And you get a server full of people, things get hectic. Wow, Minecraft is still number 10. That's wild. People like what they like, and these games survive. Valorant and Fortnite, League of Legends, Grand Theft Auto. Honestly. Like, they're good at what they were. Yeah. Honestly, I've been thinking about going back and, like, A, going back to streaming, B, just streaming Minecraft, just a basic survival. People like to watch it. 
you guys are more than welcome to join me. I'm down. And Minecraft and forever. Oh, actually, yeah. The, there's Poppy Playtime, like on line three. Oh Jesus! Yeah, Beating I Madden. saw that. The kids don't want sports anymore; they want scary dolls. Yeah, but again, but Minecraft kids. still being like line one just proves that the children yearn for the mines. They really do. I was like, what? <laughs> just watching Minecraft. No, <laughs> the, the children shouldn't yearn for the mines. You can take the children out of the mines, but you can't take the mines out of the children. I think you can do both. Right? Apparently not. Yeah, I guess not. As long as you make everything, you know, block style. It's just not letting the pain anymore. That's fine. I mean, Minecraft started the popularity of, you know, voxel-based games. That um, it did. Which, there was another game that came out recently called Enshrouded. That is, uh, it's another one of like those open world survival multiplayer games, but because it's voxel based, you have like amazing like terrain deformation and and building and everything. Oh yeah, I think I saw something about that. Somebody was like digging a hole or something, or, like you can dig yeah. pretty much anywhere. Like it literally creates like a yeah yeah. This is exactly what I was looking at. That looks literally cool. build your own dungeons. Yeah, that looks cool as hell. So things like that are now possible, and they were pipe dreams just five years ago. Right. But look at all the shit they've added to Minecraft. I haven't played it in mm-hmm. so long, but like, there's like sixty different animals now. Like, yeah, it's it all kinds of blocks and a whole different Nether realm and all. Like everything's different. It's, nether region. It's ridiculous. <laughs> nether region. But yeah, it's it it's gonna be going like it's gonna be like going back to a whole different game. Yeah, I th- and I think games like that have survived because they're an experience. Mm-hmm. That's true. And other games die and die quickly because they fail to give you that experience. Dude, my wife literally only plays like. She'll play Bully, she played Hogwarts, and then otherwise it's like Mario games. And even mm-hmm. she's like, yeah, you know, if you want to play Minecraft, she's like, if you teach me how to play it, I'd probably play it. Right. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> don't get me started. But on, conversely, there are so many other games that used to have, used to be experiences, and they just aren't that anymore. Call of Duty, for instance, used to be an amazing series. Now it's a bad experience. Mm-hmm. Now it's just bad. bad. And now that they're talking about making all of the campaigns like Modern Warfare 3. Yeah. Go I'm ahead, done. Son. Yeah. I, I kind of hate myself for even buying this last one. Like the, literally the only reason I put time into it anymore is because like I have a steady group of people that I play with. Yeah. So like And it's, you know, people that I used to work with, shit like that. So, like, it's me keeping up with them, honestly. It it was the single quickest uninstall of a game I've had. I I absolutely won't buy the next one, for sure. Not if it's more of this. And and beyond that, it's like, games like that, they lose their soul the longer they go on. Um, Even, say, looking at Fortnite, I really enjoyed uh, the end of Season 3 through Season 4. And I have not enjoyed a single bit of it since. Yeah, I used to go probably on. the start of season four. Yeah, I used to go on and do like if nobody was on, I'd just play a bunch of solos and just like I would enjoy it. But like now, unless somebody's actively on playing, like I maybe I'll throw it on, play like one or two solos, and I get bored and go do something else. Nake is in the game at this moment, and I have zero interest in going in and unlocking him. I I want him but I'm not going to buy the Battle Pass for it. Because I know I'm not going to finish the Battle Pass anyways. Well, he's not Battle Pass. He's one of the event ones. Oh, okay. Still. I mean, I ran around on a box the other day and I played with uh, Sean and Paul. So that was kind of cool, but otherwise, like, it was... the, The current map is bad. Yeah. And, you know, oh, we threw a train onto it because... Call of Duty has a train. 
And train. And we keep messing with the the movement so it's more Call of Duty like is stop. Weapon attachments to yeah. Everybody comes it's... to play this because they're tired of Call of Duty. Stop turning into Call of Duty. There's a reason why people really like the throwback map. Because they liked the original shit. Yeah. Just give me... I won't, I'm tired of complicated shit. Just Can't give me really something simple that I can just sit them, down and have fun. Uh... Again, this is why people yearn for the mines. It's simple. Yearn. It's eloquent. Right. Yearn for your mines. Yeah. Maybe after we're done with the podcast. We know oh. you like it. <laughs> no. Well, I think with that, I think that's we've gonna run end the it. gamut of <laughs> our <laughs> topic. <laughs> that's uh, we've we've reached an uncomfortable level. And now it's time <laughs> to end this, Pro- possibly forever. <laughs> well, let us know in the comments. No, not you know. forever. <laughs> no, we'll we'll be back. We'll be back. So uh, let us know down in the comments what were you most excited about for State of Play? What was your favorite video game console of all time? What do you think about all these horror games that are coming out geared towards children? Uh, Sign off in the comments. Let us know. But until next time, this was the Zero Effort Games Podcast. I'm Mike. I'm Phil. And I'm Liz. And we'll see you guys next week. Mm